Welcome back to the show. We're discussing Iran's political landscape a year after thousands took to the streets to protest against the country's controversial presidential election results. How is Iran moving forward politically and socially? For the discussion, I'm with Kaveh Afrasiavi, the former professor of political science at Tehran University and a supporter of President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad's government. He's in Boston. From Geneva, we have Hadi Gami, director of the International Campaign for Human Rights in Iran, which has become one of the leading groups reporting and documenting human rights violations in that country. And Hadi Gami, we had, of course, that comment from uh, our other guest, from uh, Kaveh Afrasiavi, saying yeah. earlier that there's been no evidence of the, uh, the sort of falsified elections that, uh, that have been claimed by the opposition. Uh, right. Um, uh, Dr. Afrasiabi made a more uh, personal, directed comment uh, regarding uh, my points of view on the elections, uh, which with all due respect for him, uh, I would like to say he was categorically wrong. Uh, we as human rights advocates have not talked about the elections being stolen or who really won the election. Uh, we have focused on the fact that Immediately after the election night, the government used extreme violence against its own citizens who were peacefully uh, questioning the result of the elections. And we have documented the killings, the torture, the mur and the rape that has taken place on the streets and in the Iranian prisons. Uh, we don't know what happened in the elections. The Iranian government claims that Ahmadinejad won 63%. There are certainly a number of irregularities on the day of election and on the days leading to the election, uh, but I don't think anyone but people who really collected the votes and uh, engaged in counting them uh, know the truth. The point is that a large segment of the Iranian population was not convinced of the result of the election, came out and peacefully questioned those uh, results, and instead it was met with extreme violence mm -hmm. that showed the government's insecurity to confront that question. Okay. Now, Dr. Afrasiabi, it is true that uh, what we saw uh, in the media, of course, didn't really help uh, the image of the Iranian government in the way that the, the protests were handled and the, the fact that there were there are still people in prison and detained uh, following those, those protests as well. Absolutely. And... <coughs> Of, you know, criticize the abuses of human rights, excessive use of force, and the show trials, etc. However, this does not bear on the fact that, you know, uh, uh, your guest uh, does not mention that he is also the head of United for Iran, a group that has held rallies from day one of the post election calling for the invalida invalidation of the election results. And that I find rather hypocritical right. on his part. Right. Because if you, if you have set up these rallies around the world, not just the United States, calling for new elections, you cannot say that you're not partisan and you don't have political bias. You cannot have your cake and eat it too, sir. And you, you're, not, well, you're not dealing with another. Dr. You know, Afro Go ahead, so, Dr. Yami. So let's, mm -hmm. let's call a spade a spade. Yeah, you know? I, and I, I object to that kind of partisanship yeah, on your part. I object on the, part, on the fact that you go and sit down with the neocons of the United Against Nuclear Iran, Mark Wallace, the protege of John Bolton who is a dead enemy of Iran. And you know why, why are all these neocons supporting your group? Why is Michael Ledin a fan of your um, organization? OK, Dr. Afrasiabi? Yeah, let's, let's, let's get uh, Dr. Uh, Hami's view. Let's get Dr. Hami's view. Because you are going view. on with a number of, yeah, uh, you're going on with a number of factual errors. You're claiming that uh, the They're day after errors. the election, United for Iran was holding rallies. Let me uh, speak. Uh, United for Iran did not come into existence till July 26th. Uh, which is well a month and a, a month half later. after the What's elections. The I would like you to go and do your research first. Go do your research first. Secondly, you difference? are talking about holding rallies for calling for elections. And again, you're dead wrong. United for Iran is an umbrella group uh, supporting human rights in Iran, and it is holding an event on the anniversary of elections in support of the prisoners of conscience. You cannot find anything on this network's uh, platform talking about elections. Number two, you're accusing mm -hmm. me of having sat down with a person from um, United Against Nuclear Iran or such a group. Uh, again, please do your research. This was a university symposium. I was, uh, I was uh, invited as a guest, and the transcript of that meeting is available. Indeed, I was confronting those people. I was attacking those people. And if you went on the web and just saw a picture of me next to that man before coming here and making such a 
uh, baseless accusations, you should do your research and okay. know what let, you're talking about. Dr. Afrasi, uh, Afrasi Abi, let me get a question to you that came in from a viewer on, on the issue of what's happened since that election. This came in from Patrick Fitzgerald in the UK, who says, did post-presidential election protests and the rise of the Green Movement in Iran change the relationship between President Ahmadinejad and the clerical establishment? Well, it certainly made it more complicated because the clerical establishment is pluralistic and they had their own fact factionalism from the above. And even if you go and look at the newspapers in Iran today, you see that there's a lot of criticisms coming from the principalists or, you know, hardline clerical factions and other factions in the clerical establishment. And you might say that that has always been the case, but got kind of aggravated in the past past year or so. Nevertheless, the fact of the matter is that, you know, you have uh, a year after the, you know, tumultuous election, uh, people who are still are looking at things from a Minikian point of view and presenting a very black and white picture, whereas the reality that has transpired in Iran of, you know, last year or so is very complex and there are shades of gray when people s tend to see black and white. You know, there were peaceful rallies and there's no doubt about that, but there were also rioters who mm -hmm. set hundreds of buildings on fire, who, who put, who torched hundreds of buses and so forth. And a human rights advocate who stands for the victims of murder and so forth and remains silent on the murder of 400 plus victims of Jundal law. And I've never seen a sentence by, you know, these people condemning the atrocities and the fact that the U.S. is now implicated okay. in supporting these terrorists groups in Iran. In, in getting a response from Dr. Gami, let me also put a question to you, Dr. Gami, that came in from the UK as well. This yes. is from Ansar Bakshi, who says, the Green Movement was a Western proxy. The election dispute was a matter callously exploited by the US as a convenient ex expedient to undermine Ahmadinejad. It was not out of a genuine concern for disenfranchised Iranians. To what degree is there a solid Green Movement anymore? And, and, and to what degree was it perhaps, as some people are claiming, a sort of hyped up or overplayed to suit Western goals for change, regime change? Uh, well, I think that is a real insult to the young generation of Iranians uh, who have formed the Green Movement. Uh, you know, what is really interesting is that on one hand, we have the situation that, yes, the U.S. is being very aggressive toward Iran, and uh, the Iranian people are suffering from that, and those, the, that same Iranian people are also suffering from very repressive policies of their government. Mm. So if they stand up to their government and, uh, and want to gain their rights, it does not automatically make them a proxy of the United States. It is true that in Iran there are many, many grave violations going on. The Iranian people have suffered greatly during the past year, and there is much anger and resentment right. toward the authorities. Okay. At the same time, they are under great repression, and Dr. that's Gami? why we don't see the great movement on the street at the moment. Unfortunately, yeah. I have to stop both you and Dr. Afrazi. I'll be able to run out of time. Gentlemen, thank you very much for contributing to this debate. My pleasure. Thank you. And thanks for being with us, too, with your questions. Remember, you can watch a podcast of the show on iTunes. This week, we're featuring my conversation with the new Miss USA, Lebanese-born Rima Fahi. She discusses the controversy surrounding her selection and hopes for the future. On the next show, another stateless Palestinian. Israel is threatening to revoke the citizenship of elected Knesset member Hanin Zogbi. They say she betrayed the state by participating in the Gaza aid flotilla. She says Israeli forces were trying to inflict maximum damage aboard the Mavi, uh, Mavi Marmara. Now she's facing death threats. We'll talk to her about that. From me and the team, join us for that. We'll see you next time.